I'm starting with 330 grams of mint. It comes from different shops, so it's in different packets. And the different packets have a different proportion of leaves and stems. But I'm going to separate first off the leaves because those hold the most uh, mint oil, which has the menthol. These packets are mostly just leaves, um, but the other packets come in these little bunches. So to get the leaves off, I can just twist and remove the stems that way. Now that I have two packets of the mint with the leaves separated from the stems, I'm going to chop up the leaves with a knife into smaller pieces. I don't want the pieces to be too small because that can cause a lot of foaming and problems in the next step. The chopped mint leaves are put into a 500 milliliter round bottom flask. The leaves were chopped up to make them slightly easier to get into the flask and also to increase the area for the steam distillation. Now that the mint leaves are in the flask, I can set up the apparatus for a steam distillation. This kind of distillation uses water vapor to pull the oils out of the mint and over a distillation apparatus so that the uh, mint oils can then be separated. About 250 milliliters of water is added to the flask as well. This water will act as the carrier for the oils in the steam distillation. Here is everything put together. The flask with the mint and water in is sitting in a heating mantle. The heating mantle is on this jack so that it can be lowered to reduce the heating in case of the flask um, boiling over. The vapors of mint oil and water will rise up into this still head and there is a thermometer in the still head to measure the temperature of the vapor. It should be about 100 degrees throughout the whole of the distillation. The vapors will then travel into this condenser. Then they will run along the condenser into this vacuum adapter and drip down into a measuring cylinder where we can collect the distillate in measured volumes. The reason that steam distillation works is because the water and the oils in the mint are not miscible with each other. This means that they don't mix in their liquid phases. This in turn means that the vapor pressures of the two liquids are irrespective of each other. And so the steam can carry the vapors of the oil over the distillation. Now that the water in the flask is boiling, it's able to release more of the oils from the leaves and send them up through the condenser. Looking at the distillate which has already come over, you can see that it's quite cloudy. And this indicates the presence of a fine suspension of mint oil droplets in the water. These droplets will have to be extracted from the water so that we can have the pure mint oil, which contains menthol. If you look very closely, you can even see a thin, oily layer on top of the distillate and that is the mint oil floating to the top because it's less dense than the water below it. Once 50 milliliters of distillate has been collected, the measuring cylinder is swapped out and the distillate is added to a bottle. The second distillate to come over is quite a lot less cloudy and this indicates the presence of less oil. So I'm going to collect another 50 milliliters and then stop the distillation and refresh the mint in the flask. After emptying the used mint out of the flask and refilling it with fresh mint, I'm adding another 250 milliliters of water and then I'm going to turn on the heating again. Essentially, I'm just going to do this another four or five times until we have a lot of distillate with our menthol mint oil in.
At this point I have two bottles of distillate. This one is the cloudy distillate which came over first in each of the runs and this one is the second clearer distillate which has less oil. The solvent which is going to be used to extract the mint oil and the menthol is called dichloromethane. So first about 50 milliliters of dichloromethane is added to the bottle of cloudy distillate. Dichloromethane is significantly more dense than water, so it forms a layer on the bottom. To get everything to dissolve, I'm going to take the bottle and just shake it up. Now I leave the bottle to separate out the two layers. Next, the whole bottle is poured into a beaker. The upper aqueous layer is decanted back into the bottle. While the lower DCM layer is decanted into a separatory funnel. From the separatory funnel, the lower dichloromethane layer is drained into a conical flask, while the upper aqueous layer will be returned back to the bottle. Another 50 milliliters of dichloromethane is added to the bottle, and the washing step is repeated. These washing steps are repeated about five times until the distillate becomes significantly clearer. You can tell that the distillate is a lot clearer now, so I'm just going to do one final washing and then we will separate our product from the dichloromethane. The same process is repeated for the clearer distillate. Because there's a little bit of water remaining in the dichloromethane, some anhydrous calcium chloride is added to absorb the water. The calcium chloride is then filtered off and the solution is transferred directly into a round bottom flask. A simple distillation is set up to remove the dichloromethane solvent, but I'm going to do this outside because dichloromethane is not great to breathe in and boiling this amount of dichloromethane indoors is not a good idea. Dichloromethane boils at about 39 degrees Celsius, so it's important to use ice water in a condenser so that most of it isn't lost into the air. What's left in the flask after boiling away all of the dichloromethane is a small amount of orange oil. The orange colour probably comes from a small amount of oxidised impurities which is in the oil. Once the oil in the flask had cooled down, it crystallised out into this waxy solid. Using a small amount of dichloromethane, I've transferred it into this test tube. After heating the solution to dissolve as much as possible, I'm transferring it to this watch glass to act as an evaporating dish. Hopefully once all the solvent has evaporated, I will be left with some solid menthol, which is a waxy solid at room temperature. And after evaporating all of the remaining solvent, what I'm left with is a small pile of crude menthol. I then carried out a recrystallization of the crude menthol using hot acetone. What I was left with is this much purer white fluffy menthol, which has a waxy consistency. The final yield was about 2.7 grams, which I'm going to transfer into this small vial. Extracting and purifying menthol was a lot of fun, and I look forward to doing more natural and medicinal chemistry in the future.